Hey, what's happening guys? Thank you for tuning into Rules for Rebels. This video is going to be kind of just an all over the place kind of ramble, um, kind of a daily vlog kind of thing, kind of a shower thought, kind of a conversation you might have with one of your buddies when you guys are really stoned. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about like AI and automation and, and, and kind of all that type of stuff. So um, I just got done watching a, a pretty interesting little mini documentary. I love documentaries. There's tons of great ones on YouTube, both like full length stuff as well as even just little like five or ten minute documentaries on like various topics and stuff. I just watched one about like why Dominicans own all the bodegas in New York and you know, I'm just kind of curious about things like that. So I somehow stumbled upon another one by the same creator and it was about like AI and automation and robotics and things like that. And it was basically talking about how you know, eventually almost every task is going to be replaced by robots. So, you know, taxi driver jobs are going to go away because we're going to have self-driving cars. The truck driving industry uh, or, or uh, the job of being a truck driver is going to go away because, again, you know, automated cars and things like that. And what's kind of funny is like right now there's a huge shortage of truck drivers. They always talk about it. But like why would anybody go into that career field when probably within the next, what, 5, 10, 15, probably 20 years at the longest, um, you know, your job's going to be done and it's going to be taken over by a robot. I thought that was kind of kind of interesting. But um, basically, it's just kind of talking about how society, most people in society, unless you're part of like one of the elite 1%, unless you know how to program these robots or unless you're the person who owns these robots, like you're kind of fucked, right? Um, and so they, they had kind of talked about like, well, should we stop technology from moving forward? And, and kind of some of the guys who create the robots we're like well you know for thousands of years we've always been innovating and trying to make life easier and uh trying to make tasks easier so like why are we going to stop now and they said even if we the u.s did stop now you know china is going to keep doing it and then china will own all, own all the robots so we can't really do that and then they kind of put in a clip from elon musk uh, about how he, you know, he's a big proponent proponent of the universal basic income. Um, I never, you know, I, I hear that term thrown around before and I kind of knew it was like, let's just fucking give people money. Uh, but I never really knew like how it worked or the inner workings of it. That's not what this documentary was about. But Elon Musk had a comment in a documentary and he was basically saying, we're going to have to go on to a universal basic income because there's just not going to be enough jobs for people. And I, I think the whole universal basic income thing is kind of interesting as well. I'm not a big fan of like giving money out to people. People. Um, I'll tell you what, a, a friend of mine the other weekend made a comment. Uh, a friend of mine's mom has an Obama phone, you know, one of these free phones. Um, and what's kind of funny about it is within the past six months, she sold a property for, I forget the actual sales price. It was at least $800,000. I think it might have been even as much as $1.6 million. Uh, basically, the neighborhood that a lot of my friends used to live in used to be like a really kind of shitty kind of gang neighborhood. And now it turned into... Um, up like probably one of the top three top five most expensive neighborhoods in Chicago it's a big yuppie place so you know all of these immigrants and all these people who used to live in a shitty neighborhood um and if any of you guys are from Chicago or whatever it's kind of the area right around uh, Hollywood Grill um if any of you guys spend a lot of time on Instagram well, what's that guy's name who's the guy with the fucking rainbow teeth and the, the crazy hair uh, Takashi 69 a couple weeks ago Takashi 69 was out in the neighborhood at uh, Hollywood Grill uh, bought a bunch of burgers and was handing them out to homeless people and things like that but anyhow I'm getting way off track here but long story short she lived in that neighborhood you know over the past 5, 10, 15, 20 years the neighborhood's gotten a lot better it's a really ritzy neighborhood right now and right now a lot of people are selling out and becoming like millionaires at the very least you know multi hundred thousand heirs um but, you know, she just sold this house for all this money. She She's fucking rich, pretty much. Um, and she's still got an Obama phone. So I'm not really a huge fan of, like, giving free money to people. You know, it always kind of annoys me when I'm at the convenience store or wherever else. And I see people using, like, the link card or the EBT card. And they, they got the new iPhone 8 Plus. They got a nicer phone than me. But, you know, my tax dollars are going to pay for their um, groceries. Or I'll see somebody buying, like, cigarettes and blunt wraps. Um, in one transaction and then with their cash and then they use the other transaction to buy something else like you know You're able to buy those blunt wraps because you're using taxpayers money for this And then the other thing with this whole universal basic income from the little bit I understand about it is like they say the money's gonna come from well We no longer need all these government bureaucrats to you know be uh, Case workers for welfare programs and things like that So all that money can just go into being passed out to every citizen um, and kind of what I think about that, I almost feel like there always has to be a social safety net. And why I say that is, is you just have some people out there who are pieces of shit. 
and you know, let's say there's some drug addict mom, and she gets her universal basic income check, and she blows it all on crack, and instead of buying diapers for, for her baby and food for her family, and when there's a, a baby with shitty diapers and there's kids starving, we're not just gonna say, sorry, you spent your universal basic income check, we're still gonna wanna help out those, you know, I'm not gonna let a baby have a shitty diaper or kids go to bed hungry or whatever else, so we're gonna wind up having to support them anyways. Um, so I feel like even if you do this universal basic income, there's irresponsible and just shitty people in society who are gonna blow that and we're still gonna need to be their, their social safety net. And I don't really, you know, like I said, I don't know too much about this thing, but it almost seems to me like there's just not, you know, no matter where savings come from, there's just not enough money to support anything like that. I'm getting so far off track. What, what, what I actually wanted to make this video to, to, to say, or kind of the initial thought that kind of spurred this video was, uh, I was kind of thinking that like even though we're all going to automation, I think down the road once automation becomes a norm, um, actually having people do things for you is going to be like a luxury service that you're going to pay for and that is going to be kind of a novelty to you. And the reason I say that, I think about like uh, uh, cell phones. You remember back for a while cell phones were getting, you know, at first cell phones started out as briefcases, then they became like the Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell phone. Uh, then they became, you know, bigger blocky Nokia phones, and then they started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And we had candy bar phones, and you guys remember those little Nokia StarTac phones, what a Star Trek, whatever they, StarTac, whatever those things were. Um, and they started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then now we're going back to bigger and bigger and bigger phones. And you know, I got an LG V2 here. People got the iPhone 8 Plus and the LG Mega and all these. Uh, <laughs> all these giant phones. So it's kind of funny how that kind of goes in a cycle. And then uh, if you think about food, like, you know, I think for, you know, back in the 50s, moms made homemade food and everything was made from scratch. And then we got microwaves and then we started doing a lot of processed foods and TV dinners and things like that. And, and things kind of went to convenience and easiness and all that. And now, you know, watch TV. A lot of the TV shows you see are like, you know, Sargento, artesian cheese and you know, craft beer, it's made in small batches instead of made in these big vats. And you know, there, there's very much so a move back to healthy, organic, raw, uh, small batch, artesian craftsmanship. Like we're very, you know, and even in like home uh, interior design stuff, you know, um, I think there was a period when things got very like modern and, and things like that. And now you kind of have a movement back to like farmhouse chic and Joanna Gaines. And I, I just think as a whole, everything in society kind of goes uh, cyclical or circular or whatever you want to say um, and so even right now everything's going to automation I was at a McDonald's at a, a truck stop in Indiana the other day on my way to the beach and now they got these kiosks and you can go up to the kiosk and order your food and it'll either be called out at the counter um, or brought out to you but like everything's going to be going the way of automation and uh, you know I'm sure we're gonna have driverless cars and you're gonna get into a taxi and there's gonna be nobody there and it's gonna drive you around um, and I'm sure it'll be like really cool and really popular for a couple of years and eventually at some point I'm sure of it that you're gonna have people advertising like we have real drivers driving your car we have a real cook cooking your food we have a, a real waitress bring it out and it's almost gonna go back to where it's like a novelty and a premium service to actually have a person doing something for you even though right now we're going to, to having robots do everything for you um, and then kind of one last thought on this topic that uh, I thought somebody's dancing out there uh, one last topic on this that I thought was kind of funny or I guess not funny, but one, one last thing that I thought was kind of interesting about this whole thing is, is do you think this whole robot thing is gonna be like this huge problem? Um, you know, I know a lot of times in society we blow these things up to be this this big deal or this huge concern or, or you know, whatever else. And, uh, you know, think back to like Y2K. Y2K was gonna be like the end of the world, computers are gonna crash, the power grid's gonna go down, and it kind of came and went and, and nothing really happened. So like with this whole robotics thing, is this really going to be this huge job killer and this change in society and everything else? Um, is it going to completely change capitalism? You know, is it going to be this giant thing or is it going to be kind of like no big deal? Um, one interesting thing that somebody said in a documentary I was watching, the guy said, you know, look, they like the internet boom was insane. It's completely revolutionized the way that we shop and even in many ways the way that we interact with one another. Most of it, you know, a lot of us shop online now instead of going into brick and mortars. But it hasn't really changed uh, capitalism in the sense that before you had people working at, at big box stores or Macy's or um, you, you had people basically working retail 
And now, you know, all those people who are working retail now that everything's going through the mail system, well, now everything, you know, a lot of those retail jobs turned into warehouse jobs. So whereas somebody before would be helping a customer on the sales floor of a department store, um, when things change in e-commerce, that customer's package still needs to be picked off the shelf and packed and shipped out and everything else. So basically the, the jobs have transition, transitioned from one thing to the next. But what happens when robots uh, begin being the ones to pack the orders and you know, even office jobs, even white collar jobs aren't safe because that person who did the payroll, well now a, a robot can figure out the payroll and a robot can cut the checks and mail the checks. So I mean, even those of you guys who are like, oh, I'm an accountant or I do payroll or I do this or I do that or the other, like it's getting to the point where it's not just random, you know, robotic tasks that can be done. It's actually with artificial intelligence, like there's actually like thought and intelligence behind these things. So they can actually do like white collar jobs as well. And it's, uh, it's just kind of something uh, something kind of crazy to think about. So I, um, just kind of a rambling video. I know I was kind of all over the place in this one, uh, but I was kind of, you know, I, like I said, I was watching this documentary. It seemed kind of interesting. Had some thoughts I wanted to ramble off. I'll drop a link to this uh, this YouTube documentary in the uh, the comments section below. Um, and I'm kind of kind of curious to hear your guys, uh, your guys' thoughts on these topics as well. So uh, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys kind of think about all these issues. And uh, I was making this video not paying attention. I went the wrong way. Um, anyhow, let me know what you guys think about this topic. If you have an interest in this kind of stuff, watch a documentary. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.